Men could not be bothered to fulfill the conjugal rights of their own spouses because they do it in haram or sometimes they don't realize. The Prophet says, When you fulfill the intimate rights of your spouse, it is a sadaqah, it is an act of worship, it is a charity. The Sahaba was surprised. They listening, they said, Me, have sex with my wife, and it's an act of worship. Whoa. So they said, How? Oh, Messenger, how is that? You know what he said? Do you see if this person fulfilled his desires in a haram way, would he get a sin? They said, yes, he would. Well, if he fulfilled it in the right way, he would get a reward. Subhanallah. Many people say, you know, when a man calls his wife, she's supposed to respond. You know, Subhanallah. What about the wife's needs? Many men don't even want to talk about that. You've left her alone. She's remaining this way as though she's a widow. Subhanallah. And she's not, she has a husband. He's not really interested. He's not keen. She'll touch you at night and so on. What do you do? Hey, I'm tired, I'm trying to sleep. Don't you see? What time I came? What time do I go? And you say, what did I say? I didn't say anything. May Allah forgive us. The only reason I'm speaking bluntly and directly is because my beloved messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken in the same blunt and direct way. Otherwise, I would be ashamed of speaking and saying things. He spoke about it live, open, clear, no hiding because Allah knows this problem was there and it's going to come. Where men sometimes think that's it, it's me. I'm only worried about me, me, me and me, you know, no way. Not at all. It is about us. It is about a family unit. A family unit is made up by more than one person. Otherwise, it's not called a family unit. A marriage is made up by more than one person. Otherwise, it's not called a marriage. You can't say I'm a married man when you don't have someone who called a wife. You can't say you're married. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know to give people their independence when you're married sometimes people think and I know the in-laws sometimes feel this in some cultures like I said I'm not told this is in the world a woman gets married and the mother-in-law thinks that okay I can now fire the maid I used to pay because now I've got a maid whom I don't need to pay if that's the case you have failed no woman would actually say no to doing some of the household chores if she is appreciated correctly. Am I right, sisters? You heard that. They don't mind. They will cook for you. They will do for you and so on. They will say a lot. But at the same time, they will say as much, I'm sorry, they will do, do a lot. They want you to appreciate it. That's all. You just need to say, wow, you must have been working from the morning to the evening. Don't worry. The weekend, we'll, we'll go out to eat. I'm not encouraging going out to eat, by the way. But I'm giving an example. You can bring her something, bring a little gift. We take gifts for everyone here and then what about your spouse? What have you done? Have you ever brought her a gift or him? Have you ever decided sometimes, subhanAllah? You know, I remember, and I'm going to tell you this, it's my own life, okay? So I'm not doing riba of someone or saying something of someone. One day I was leaving to travel on a journey. And I remember as I was going, there were some visitors. Now normally you greet your spouse and you go as though you're never going to come back. Because every time you leave the home, it could be the last time. They may never see you again. So whenever you leave loved ones, make sure you utter beautiful words to them because it could be the last time that you're ever seeing them, right? So I saw my wife was busy and I'm thinking to myself, what should I do now? You know, she's there with the visitors. I can't go in. These are ladies sitting and saying, love you, man, love you, love you. And so, you know, some of us, it's still a little bit taboo to do it in public because, you know, I always believe when people show too much of love in public, I don't think they get along inside their doors, you know. It's just a show, you know. It's like the boxers who hold hands in public and they want to go, ah, they want to box each other, you know. They were just holding hands before the fight. 
But those who really love each other, it's more than words. It's more than, it's actually something you feel is there. That does not mean to not say the words. Speaking of the best husband, I want to tell you a story. A really good one on this subject. Making people conscious of Allah. You don't just invite people to have taqwa of Allah with your words. Your character says a lot. A friend of mine, he became a friend actually on a short trip, told me about how he was raised in a Muslim family. He's Guyanese origin. And in Guyana, there's Muslims that are committed and there's Muslims that have mixed their religion with Hinduism. And some Muslims that are just Muslim by name and they've completely almost lost everything of the religion. They almost know nothing of the religion. And he was of the latter type. He almost knew nothing about the religion. So as he was growing up in New York, he almost completely just wasn't even practically Muslim. <coughs> he used to you know, get into fights with his mother, he went to jail a couple of times, he was in gangs, all kinds of stuff. Later on in life he decides he wants to, you know, he's looking for God. And he knows by, at least by name he's Muslim. I think his name was Muhammad or something, right? By name he's Muslim, so he should look into what religion first? Islam. So he starts looking into Islam, starts going to the masjid. Starts learning how to pray again, becomes more serious. At the time, he was, you know, he had married his girlfriend who was Christian or whatever. And he starts becoming more serious about the religion. And then his wife notices that he's praying. And the beer is gone from the fridge. And he's not going out with his drinking buddies. And he doesn't go to Atlantic City on the weekends. He's a different guy. Something's changed, you know. And he doesn't say anything to her. He, just on his own, he didn't yell at her, didn't tell her to you know, put a hijab on or whatever, lose all her friends, he didn't do any of that. He went to a scholar, and I thank the, I make dua for the scholar that he went to. He didn't tell me his name, but he said, I went to my scholar, and I told him, look, I'm becoming more and more aware of Islam, but my wife, of course, is a Christian, and she's not even a practicing Christian, she's just kind of what I was before. She's exactly like I was before. How do I help her? He said, don't tell her a thing about Islam, just be the best husband you can be. And to do that, just study what kind of a husband the Prophet was. Just do that. Don't worry about what you need to tell her. Worry about being the best possible husband. And that is the sunnah of the Messenger. The Messenger would buy his wife gifts. The Messenger would joke with his wife. The Messenger would spend time with the mother of the believers. The messenger would praise and compliment the mother of the believers. I'm mentioning that on purpose, guys. <laughs> he would compliment them. Very, diff very painful for you to say a compliment. I understand, especially for those of you that come from my, from my original country, Pakistan. For you to give a compliment to your wife can cause an ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand, but <laughs> it's a sunnah, guys. Good food. That's amazing, you know. And your, we're so our wives, our, the, the sisters are so used to hearing nasty things from us. Then when we say nice things, they get freaked out. <laughs> like if the husband just says, "You look really nice today." She goes, "What do you want?" <laughs> oh my God. And like she gets worried. Like he's up to, you know. We gotta fix that. That's a problem. <laughs> it can't be healthy. So he starts doing these things with his wife. And in the beginning, he used to argue with her sometimes about Islam. And tell her how Christianity doesn't make sense. How can three be one and one be three? All those kinds of arguments, you've heard them before, right? And none of those would work with his wife. None of them. He's like, no, no. I'm a Christian and that's it. Jesus is in my heart. Leave me alone. Three years go by, he stops talking to her about Christianity and how dumb it is or whatever, stops debating with her, he's just being what he can be as the best husband and one day he's making maghrib and his wife joins him in salat and he's in salat it messes up his salat like you know like <laughs> right what's, just, what's happening here right so he gives you know he, after salat he looks at her and he goes what happened and she goes, what? Nothing. And he goes, no, you have to tell me what happened. <laughs> and of course she says what pretty much any wife would say, it's complicated. <laughs> All right? But eventually she tells him, and she tells him, look, I've never seen a husband like you. My dad wasn't like that. I've never seen a father like you. The way you are with our child, I've never seen a father be like that. It's so beautiful. It, it, this religion can't be wrong. 
It can't be wrong. This is ittaqullah. You see how aware you are of Allah in your life. Right? It's not how many ayat you've memorized, how many hadith you know, how much knowledge you can spit out at someone, how many quotes from scholars you can deliver. It's not about that. Then how are you living your life? People can see that. You're calling people to the taqwa of Allah. Haqqa tuqatihi.